Hello, hello, and welcome to Temple of the False Pod, where our decks are not optimized, but our plays sure as heck are fun. I'm Andy. I'm Bruce! That's Bruce. He dragged me out of bed this morning to record this episode because he is... He's, he's vibing. He's literally vibrating uh, with excitement. I'm still buzzing from Philly. I'm, I'm not going to lie. We, uh, we are postponing our, our Temple's Treasures to bring you this special episode. Um, we're just pushing everything off a week. Uh, because we... This is... We, Bruce just got back from Philly, and that's just how things lined up. Yeah, it's our Philly-filled episode. F- Philly... Uh, nope. Philly, Philly filled was good. That was, that's it. Um, yeah, we're, I know. We're bringing you the wisdom. Um, that's a, that's a cheesesteak reference, folks. Oh, nice. I was, I was having, <laughs> having a hard time. Yeah, I know. I know. I realized as I said it, this is a stretch. <laughs> Temple University false pod because temples in philly all these things i didn't know there you go temple university is in philly um yeah i got my coffee here nice i'm 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 ready to listen i'm I'm here to record (laughs) i have plenty of thoughts i i missed out i you know money uh (laughs) LA is a lot farther, farther, a lot farther ways to come too. Yeah, uh, Um, that can be a little, a little more tricky. So we'll see, we'll see what what we get up to in the future. But uh, we're we're going to talk about Philly today. Uh, So yeah, we're going to talk about MagicCon. Um, But I think at the start, Nick Philly. But with, uh, I mean, the first half, we're going to talk more just sort of a, a what to expect. I don't think the audience is ready to listen to me ramble on for an hour about all the fun things I got to do in Philly. Um, I want to tell you, you know, when you plan to make your next trip to whichever Magic Con you're going to, whether you're going to Minneapolis or you're doing one of the Star City events or you've got any kind of Magic-related convention. um, Andy and I, uh, Philly is just the most recent one. Andy and I have gone to Plenty of magic-related conventions, whether it's PAX East, whether it's Gen Con, whether it's un, uh, whether it's uh, PAX Unplugged, however, whatever you know, all, all sorts of all sorts of uh, various conventions, and we just want to want to give you a general idea of what to expect at some of these conventions to, uh, because I, I think a big part of of really enjoying your time at these uh, is you know it really helps when you know what to expect uh, when you're when you're coming to these conventions so um, just something you know so we're gonna throw out a few tips and tricks and uh, a couple little hints and suggestions and and yes I will probably be tailoring a lot of these right to magic con because uh, well <laughs> Minneapolis is coming up in May mm. uh, and I you know and if you have the opportunity to go I recommend it so yeah um... <clears throat> My, my, oh, excuse me. It's tough. This is what I mean, my, get Andy up this early in the morning. Yeah, you know, I woke up. <laughs> now I'm here. That's it. Had breakfast. <laughs> Got my coffee. Um, please excuse the, uh, the water heater. I don't know if anyone can hear it, but, uh, my, my, my experience with conventions, uh, is definitely a little bit. Uh, sparser than uh, than yours, Bruce. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've been to PAX East three times, um, and I, I've gotten I've gotten Magic games in twice. I have I have yet to take a step into any of the like the the planned play. Whatever I don't know. Like any of the, right. the events, I guess, um, and beyond that, like I've like texted people who I thought might be there, and they, you know, were like, "Oh yeah, like come get a game in or something." Um, right. But uh, 
you know, if, if you don't know what to do, uh, I know from experience, it's very easy to just kind of sit there and be like, I hope somebody notices me. Um, <laughs> so hopefully these tips, if you, if you also have been in that position, maybe these tips will, uh, come in handy, I guess. Right. Cause everybody's looking for a game. That's, that's about it. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, initially, I, I think. I'm just going to jump right in. The, Please do. The big one, what mm-hmm. to expect, go early. You want to get there as soon as it starts. Because as the day progresses, every line is going to be longer. Now, whether you're at, uh, you know, whether, whether you're waiting to get to a panel or, or you want to talk to a particular artist or you want to uh, just anything. If there's a line, the line will be longer the longer into the day you wait. You do not want to get, you stroll in, stroll into your your convention at noon on the Saturday, and think, ah, I'm just going to go and talk to this person because you're going to wait a long time before you get the chance to actually do that, and those wait times are far less if you get there right away. Mm. Um, and I don't, and and actually, and I don't even mean just get it i don't even mean early on the day i mean well for philly uh magic con was a friday saturday sunday friday at you know at 10 a.m when it opened the place was it, it wasn't empty but it was sure a lot less full than it was on saturday at noon um so so yeah so if you you know if you're going to this with and and your first thought is you know I really wanted to talk to pick your artist. Well, great. Make that your priority and make that the number one thing you're going to do when you get there. So when you walk in, you immediately make a beeline to that person. You'll have time to look at the other stuff. Make a beeline to that person. Say hello. Talk. Do whatever it is you wanted to do. Whether I don't know, If you're talking to an artist, maybe you want to get a proof. Maybe you want to get a sketch. Maybe you want a signature and you just don't want to wait forever. Make that your priority. And I do recommend otherwise prioritizing everything that you think is going to involve a line. I mean, it worked out for MagicCon that there was no lineups for the, for the panels. You just simply strolled into that area and sat a seat. That isn't the case when it's Gen Con. That isn't, <laughs> that isn't the case for PAX East where no. you're going to get in line and you're basically going to wait an hour just sitting in the line, not being able to leave. So these are all things you really want to have have down ahead of time. So, um, so as far as what to expect, expect the crowds to get worse as the day as the day continues. So, um, mm. just some, something to keep in mind. So, I think too um, with with that as well. I think that uh, it's also nice to keep in mind that like you can stay late. Like I, there have been yeah. plenty of PAX East nights that i've like stayed till close just because like people are still milling about you can find games you can you know hang out with the people that are there meet new people you know uh, if you if you didn't come alone you can hang out with that person i know uh, i know pack specifically has like a board game area where you can like check out board games right um and well yeah and virtually every convention has that lobby con where right you know, I mean, PAX East has an area that basically shuts down at a particular time and then it's locked off. Right. But the rest of the time, like you said, the board gaming area was open until late. And the same with MagicCon Philly. While the the convention area where all the vendors and everything else was, was shut down at, I think it was seven. Uh, the rest of the, you know, the convention center itself had plenty of seats and tables all up and down the hallways in the side rooms that and those you know those were open and available for you know well well into the night so um again if you're looking you know if you're showing up to get some games in with your friends you can wait Uh, talk to your friends and try and and push that back towards towards later in the day after you've had a chance to do the other things you want to do yeah um, that involved the convention center itself so yeah for sure and I think too, what's nice about that is that like 
as somebody who gets you know overstimulated fairly easily like the the nice thing about lobby cons and like the the late night games is that like it's quieter like it's less crowded yes uh sometimes it's fairly crowded like in localized areas but like um for the most part compared to a full convention hall <laughs> it is yeah. much quieter um and I think it's just like it's such a chill time to either go early, like you're saying, or go late. Yeah. Um, obviously, with going late or staying late, I guess not going late. Yeah, uh, staying late, like you said, a lot of the stuff is shut down. But if you're looking for games, if you're looking for you know just to be around like-minded people, it's it's definitely a thing where it's like, oh yeah, no, I can sacrifice a few hours of sleep to to hang out and. Uh, you know, shoot the shoot the hay. Yeah, uh, one of the things I like to do, as far as just with the prep before I before I go, and obviously there's several things we can talk about that. But one of the things that I like to look at is if the cons, if the convention has any kind of a map. Mm. And I know I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to maps, but. It's that uh, it has, frontier it a, Canadianness to you. Could be. If, if it has a map, then you can get a general layout of where everything is in your head as you're there. So you're not completely at a loss. Now, for Philly, you know, essentially it was a, the large walkway through the convention space, and then there's the convention area itself. And... The map, is, the map they gave you was very rudimentary. It's like, this is where the panels are, and this is where the vendors are, and this is where the artists are, and this is where this is. Okay. And then you had to go and search in there to find what you were actually looking for. Other conventions do a better job. I know, I mean, Gen Con breaks it down to every single Every table, booth. yeah. Every yeah. table is listed and laid out and... And I think, I, I, honestly, I think their map is even interactive. I think you can, like, touch the screen wow. and it pops up and tells you. I'm not 100% on that. But MagicCon definitely wasn't that. It wasn't nearly that in-depth. But even just having the bit of a map that we did have, um, I, I found that to be, to be helpful just because, you know. Yeah. Was, Convention halls are gigantic. Um, they are. They and, are. So. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that reminds me of I. I went to a uh, uh, what used to be known as Boston Comic Con. I think it's now Fan yep. Expo. Uh, okay. They they also had maps where you could see, you know, what panels were happening when, uh, what artists were going to be at what specific booths, uh. Keeping an eye out for bathrooms, uh, always helpful, no matter where you are. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of cons when they set up the hall. You know, the booths have these massive booths that hang down from the ceiling, and they're, they're they cover the cover whole areas around the side. You know, in front of the sign that says men's, women's, and suddenly you have no idea where the, the bathrooms are. So, it never hurts to to get a peek at that. Um, I yeah. happened to find a bathroom in Philly that was tucked in behind a curtain that virtually no one knew about. Yeah, um, that's my also favorite. Had a water, well, it also had a water fountain in front of it that was completely Ooh. broken. Ooh, good. Broken. Yeah, I, uh, dry as a bone. I know that whenever I go to PAX, I spend the day keeping an eye out for, like, bathrooms that are further from the, like, floor that, like, as the night goes on would probably be less occupied because uh, sometimes you probably just need some more quiet. clean <laughs> yeah exactly uh, uh if you step away you know from the floor for five more minutes just to get to that yeah. bathroom it's it's always a solid idea to just mm -hmm. like you know sometimes you walk into a bathroom you're like nope i can't even <laughs> i can't be in here uh so uh bathrooms <laughs> bathrooms <laughs> And that was something else that you were talking, something else that you were sort of talking about earlier. The idea of um, know your tolerance level mm -hmm. for that level of stimulation. Because, I mean, someone like me, I'm good for three or four hours. Like, I can, 
I'll just go with that and I'm fine. I'll be in the middle of the hall, a constant stream of ambient noise, people around me all the time, uh, you know, squeezing your way down aisles to try and, you know, to try and get to wherever you were going. Um, I'm good with that for a long period of time. But if you're not, and there are plenty who aren't, keep an eye out for the locate for locations where where there is a little bit of where there's a break from from that. There's always a space, a quiet space somewhere else. Even mm. if there even if there are other people there, they're just a little quieter. It, it just makes it easier. Um, a lot of conventions now, uh, I know that I know Philly had this. Um, it's just it's just a quiet room. Yeah, you can just walk in, put your stuff down, and you're good. I remember in in at PAX every year that I've been, mm-hmm. they've had a quiet room, and then I saw somebody post about uh, Philly <clears throat> having one, and I was like, oh, great. <laughs> yeah, because uh, especially like you know, um, you know, I I I get overstimulated probably faster than you, but I know that like post pandemic, especially if this is your first time being around a lot of people since. 2020 or before uh it's it's it can be just overwhelming to start you know uh so uh keep an eye out for those as well in in addition to uh, a nice quiet clean bathroom right and in different locations i mean like for some it's easy enough to just simply go outside Mm, for sure however i will tell you if you were looking to reduce the level of stimulation while you were at Philadelphia uh, at the convention, it is smack dab in the middle of downtown. Every door you can exit from, you immediately exit onto a street loaded with cars. And on Saturday and Sunday, the street traffic was insane. It was packed. It was, it was just as packed as it was inside the convention center, maybe even more so. Um, so you were not going to get a reprieve going outside. Um, <laughs> it was, yeah, that was, that was something that was very different. So um, another thing to expect, the convention, where, wherever it is, is going to have crappy overpriced food. I guarantee it. The food is just not going to be good. They think they've got you trapped in there. Um, in the case of Boston, they kind of do because that's what we have experience with. The Boston Convention Center is not necessarily that close to anything. I mean, if you're prepared to walk 20, 20 or 30 minutes, you can get to plenty of food. Mm. But if you're not prepared to do that, then you're stuck with whatever the convention is offering. So um, just something, something to keep in mind when you're, mm. when you're factoring in your budget. Uh, if, you're not, uh, if you're not prepared to walk for a bit, you're going to pay dearly for your food. I think too, uh, at least with with PAX, um, I know that PAX likes to emphasize the fact that they have like, like a, like a little lawn area to the side that has you know food trucks. Um, yeah, I don't know how it was in Philly. I doubt it. Well, um, <clears throat> Philly didn't need it, and it was obvious that the conventions uh, there was. I can recall. I think maybe two places two vendors in the convention center that sold food. It was almost impossible to get food in the convention center because Reading Terminal Market is literally across the street. It's across a one-way street that has three lanes of traffic. Half the time, there's no traffic on it because there's a red light. So you just sprint across the street, literally open the door into the market and get whatever you're looking for. Yeah, I heard that there was um, uh, quite, a, quite a selection. I did get one of my, one of my favorite uh, favorite uh, egg and sausage bagels bagel Ooh. sandwiches on Sunday. So, um, yeah. Um, from from a practical standpoint, the things that I've learned about um, just going to conventions is bring a bottle of water. It's easy to buy water there, and if you do, yeah. fine. But like, there are plenty of places to fill it up. Uh, yeah, as someone who was. Uh, uh, I was trying my best to minimize on this one because I've had too many conventions where I bring a bag that has a bunch of magic cards because I've got a whole pile of decks and a play mat and tokens and dice and, and a box a to box draft and because I'm going to draft it and I'm going to do this and that and the other. And by the end of the day, my shoulder is ripping out. And I think I'm bleeding. Um, 
So this time I minimized and that was good. But I also said to myself, I don't want to carry the water bottle. So I mm. didn't. And I said, I'll buy water when I'm there, drink that and then refill it. Refilling it was a pain in the butt. Oh, really? And buying the water was a $5 bottle. It, and then you still have to carry the bottle. Yeah. So you're still carrying it anyway. So yes, bring a bottle from home. I, it just doesn't make sense yeah. not to. I mean, and you do want it. The conditions I, are super dry. Yeah. They're, especially now where they're trying to make sure that everything is well ventilated. Like, like air yes. is coming through there. It's drying you out. There are a lot of people in there, and on top of it, playing with p- pieces of cardboard will just dry you out anyway. And if you're focused, you're forgetting to drink water. I promise you. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it is like the number one thing that I always just like overlook. But um, you had mentioned the ventilation. Yeah. Something else to expect. Expect fewer people to be wearing masks than you ex- than you thought were going to wear masks. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and this is this is true whether or not, and I'm not saying you know, I'm not saying this as somebody who always wears a mask or as somebody who never wears a mask. I'm just saying this because it there will be fewer people wearing a mask than you think. Um, it you do you yeah. understand that other people are going to do what they do, and there's just not a whole lot you can do about it at that point. So. Um, if you are, if you would prefer not to wear the mask, then you're not wearing the mask. And if you prefer to wear the mask, then put it on. Um, but just understand that probably fewer people than you expect were, will wear the mask. Yeah. Um, Philly, uh, the convention uh, or Magic Con required a mask, but it, they enforced that as you were going into the main hall. So you walked into the convention center. No one insisted on a mask. You went through security. No one insisted on a mask. You took the escalator up the stairs. No mask. You were pointed in either direction of the convention center or the hallway. No one requires you to wear a mask. And then when you get to the doorways of the actual hall, you require to wear a mask. This was the only place. Once you're in there with your mask on, you're walking around, you're doing whatever, you'll see plenty of folks who either have a mask around their chin or don't have one at all. A lot of people were sitting there and eating. Others were, you know, they were walking around and drinking out of their water bottle. Others simply just didn't want to wear a mask, so they didn't. The enforcement inside of the convention, I thought, was a little weak. But this is hard. This is not something I would have criticized Wizards about. Um, yeah, I don't know that they could have, you know, other than having a lot more people there to simply walk around and say, "Oh, don't forget to put your mask back." Yeah, it's uh, definitely about even then. I don't think they would have got. Yeah, I don't think it would have got any better. So it's tough because it's definitely about you know how much they're enforcing it is how much people are going to do it. Um, right. I think people would yeah, rather if... wear one than than be challenged. But um, right. I think that uh, I mean, like I know that PAX East, the last one I went to, which was mm-hmm. last year. Uh, I think I saw one person without a mask. Um, granted, different time, different location, yep. lots of yes. different things. Um, yep. So just be prepared. <laughs> uh, if if you're somebody who can't take the risk, um, that yeah, said, and also simply put, yeah, your to- if your tolerance level, if you're if you're saying to yourself, I can go to this because they're insisting that everyone wear a mask, then just know. They might be insisting on it, but the enforcement level can only be so good. Mm. And there are going to be people who simply will take off the mask at some point, and that's that. So, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it's un, it's unfortunate for those who have you know who have that level of risk. Uh, but you know, I also don't want to encourage anybody to you know spend the money to go to a convention only to find out when you get there that you really can't stay. It's just too dangerous. So yeah, um, yeah. I, you like I said, expect you know, expect, expect less people, people yeah. to be wearing masks than than you thought. Be cynical about it. Uh, yes. Um, that said, bring hand sanitizer. Uh, 
wash your hands often. <clears throat> Obviously, uh, uh, test if you have symptoms when you get back. Mm-hmm. Um, well, yeah, and it's and it's unnerving when you're there, right? Every every day, you know, I wake up in my hotel room, and I've got a sore throat. Like, oh great, oh great, I've got COVID. Like, no, 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 Bruce, you don't have COVID. Yes, exactly. <clears throat> you have a sore throat from the day before. Oh, and you didn't drink enough water. Yeah, that's a big so thing too. I wake too. up with a sore throat. So you know, twenty minutes, an hour later, after I've you know showered and brushed my teeth and you know drank a bunch of water and then had breakfast wow suddenly my symptoms are all gone and i'm feeling so yeah i think that that's a that's a big thing with drinking water too is that not only are you just going to feel better as a person like you're also you know your body is running more efficiently uh you're going to feel less bad and you're going to actually stave off cold etc um, yes. Exhaustion. Right. Um, and I think, too, a thing to keep in mind is that, especially in this post-pandemic world, uh, ask before you touch other people's cards. Um, maybe they don't want yes. you touching them. Um, and I think that that kind of, like, even... It, it's an interesting thing, because I, I feel like it was a thing that was just taken for granted so often uh, before all of this. And I think yeah. that even without you know worries of of sickness illness um Mm -hmm. it it just has become more commonplace to be a little bit more territorial of uh your cards your your battlefield whatever right between between sickness and the cost of the cards um and uh and an opponent who has sticky fingers and and I don't mean that he's going to steal your cards. I mean, he literally just finished eating, you know, some gooey, cheesy mess or, you know, a greasy slice of pizza or whatever. Before you touch anybody's stuff, before you, or, you know, you go to take a picture of a cosplayer or you do it, just ask. Mm. Just ask. Yeah. Do you, do you mind if I, do you mind if I read the card? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, and some people will be like, ah, uh, Here. And they just turn it and, and push it towards you. I had that happen more than once this weekend. Just somebody just spun the card and guy and pushed it right to right to me, so I could read the card. It's fine. Uh, it, it just, you know, an easy way to an easy way to manage that. Um, and you know, and the same with and the same with cosplayers. I mean, mm. come on, they want to get their picture taken. <laughs> right. They just want, but they want to make sure that it's getting done right. Uh, yeah. It was interesting because, like I said, I sat in there. I sat next to uh, next to Olivia while she was um, in Just the directly next study. Year. Well, there were literal tables in the study, and I was playing a magic uh, a, com- a commander game at one of those tables. So I was sort of there, and I was watching a lot of people interact with her over the course of the hour or so that I was playing. Um, <clears throat> she has no problem with people taking her taking her picture, but she poses for the shot. Mm. So no. Don't take my picture when I'm not ready for it. Right. Because, you know, if she's standing off to the side chatting with a friend, she's being, you know, if she's animated or doing something, she's not really in, you know, performing as, as per the costume. So if you want to take the picture, then just let her know. And I'm, I watched her do it a dozen times where she literally said, you know, pointed to her friend, she said, give me a second, turned around, you know, posed with the person, they did whatever, I mean, somebody even asked, you know, would you do a mini interview with my puppet? <laughs> and they recorded it, and it was a hand puppet. It was very cute. Um, but it was, you know, like three questions, and she was game, but, you know, you just got to ask. Yeah, ask. and I think, so. I, I mean, like, to an extent, a lot of a lot of these cosplayers are there for pictures, and yeah. uh, they, they obviously want to be seen in the best light as they can, but also they don't want to... Uh, they 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 want their boundaries respected. I know that a lot of people in the past have had. I mean, and still continue. I I don't want to minimize that. Uh, have yeah. have issues with with either people being too forward or uh, just awkward and shy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, it's this tough line to balance with strangers. I mean, this is what yeah. you're dealing with: is strangers and these people. They're they're people, and uh, 
they're they're there to get their picture taken um to do their job uh essentially because they're uh, yeah especially in context of magic con these they were these cosplayers there were a number of people there who were getting paid yeah they were paid to be there and paid to have their picture taken with these folks they were i mean they would have been they're, to do they're otherwise, enthused but... they're enthused yes. to get the best picture for you um right so just ask um uh yeah so as far as what what to expect yeah expect all of these you know if there's a magic personality that you want to talk to they are probably going to be very happy to you know to have a to have a 30 second chat with you and just sort of and talk about whatever i mean yes respect their space and uh you know, uh, just sort of keep that in mind. Um, I was lucky enough to play a game with Shivam, and uh, everybody who came up during the game started with, I know you're in the middle of the game, I just wanted to say thank you, or I just wanted to get, you know, could we do a, could we do a quick picture? And it was 30 seconds and it was done. And mm. it was beautiful, and that's, you know, that's his expectation. And that's, you know, that's sort of what... Um, you know, it, it's understood that that's how this is. That that's how this works. And it wasn't like any any of us at the table were like, "Oh, I can't believe this." Because I mean, <laughs> they know who Shivam is. Yeah, <laughs> you know who Shivam is, and you know how this is going to work. And if you honestly thought you were going to get a commander game where he was just going to be, you know, left alone for over an hour in a place where virtually everyone knows who he is, well, in the middle a of a world. yeah, in the middle of a place where you go to take pictures. Um, right. Right. So. <laughs> But you know, but yeah, don't don't hesitate if you you know if you see folks. I and I'm not you know there were uh, pot, people who who do who have podcasts who are you know who aren't nearly as famous as as, as Shivam who were recognized and people were happy to chat with them and talk and it just yeah if you see somebody there and you know you're excited to see them you know what they you know they would love to hear how much you love their work. I would cry. I guarantee. Um, so. Um, for sure. And I mean, um, I think too, like with the flip side of that coin is like also, you know, respect, like, yeah. like if they're in the middle of a game, you know, like you said, a lot of these people were Keep like, Hey, quick. I know you're in the middle of a game. If that person says no, just back off, find them later, yeah. whatever. Like, and don't take it personally. Um, yeah. I know something else that we wanted to talk about was what wizards could do better. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do want to talk about this a little bit and obviously this is going to be way more focused on Philly than it is going to be on other things because most of the other conventions that I went to where Wizards was involved were years and years and years ago so yeah. it, they, it just doesn't apply um, so I want to give a caveat here because what Wizards could do better is just going to have to be a negative right. a negative theme to it Right up front, I want to say this. I thought Wizards did a great job. I thought I thought the event was well managed. I thought it was well run. I thought there were, I I had some issues in the mornings, uh, but that was more issues with the convention facility and the staff itself than it than it was with the magic portion. Mm-hmm. Um, the way Philly set it up was you could get into the building, and of course they wouldn't let you into the convention hall until it was open. Yeah, fine. But they also wouldn't let you wait in certain places, and then they would force you into another location, and then you couldn't go out the way you came in. And the Philly Convention Center is several blocks wide and several blocks long. It's huge. So they force you to go out of a different entrance, and now you're five blocks away from where you wanted to be. So if you're meeting up with somebody, there's a good chance that you can't take the shortest route to get to them. And that was obnoxious, and it was obnoxious on both Saturday and Sunday mornings. Um, but, like I said, that wasn't a that wasn't a Wizards thing. But overall, I thought Wizards did, did a spectacular job. What you're going to hear with me is a little bit of I think this is more nitpicking. You know, mm-hmm. I think you presented a I think Wizards did a great thing. Now here here's a couple of of little things that they could have done better. Um, so one of the things they could have done better. I didn't realize that every single person who attended the event got a swag bag. I just assumed that that was something that was for the higher tier levels. 
So if you got a command zone pass, I thought that there would be some swag attached to that that I wouldn't get. As somebody who just had a weekend pass, I, I had the ticket to get into the building. That's mm-hmm. what I had. But it turns out everybody got some level of swag. Now, I'm sure that the higher up you went, the better your swag, but whatever. Um, it wasn't clear where to go to get it. Hmm. It, wasn't, it wasn't until the Sunday when I noticed a few signs which actually said what room to go to. And I didn't even notice those signs all that much. A friend of mine said, did you pick up your bag of stuff? I'm like, I didn't think I got a bag of stuff. He's like, yes, you do. You go in that room. And it was down a hallway. And you walk into the room and there is a row of Wizards employees at one end. And a big, you know, maze, you know, you follow, you know, the queue to follow through. They scan your little welcome card and then they hand you a bag of stuff. But I, I, if it wasn't for my friend, it's likely I would have missed out on that entire bag of swag. Hmm. And it was just, I would have thought this would be something you'd want to stick in there, stick in people's hands right away. Like this should be one of the first things. I would think that 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 should have been something that was just inside the doors of the convention center. So literally Mm. as you walk in, You've got a pile of people who just head straight over there. I mean, in my case, I got six packs of uh, of, of the new of the new set, mm-hmm. a mystery a mystery booster, uh, the uh, the con exclusive arcane signet, and and a playmat. Oh, nice! So nothing too special. I understand that wizards occasionally, in some of them, at random, threw in other big prizes or bigger prizes, or maybe extra packs, or whatever. I wasn't lucky enough to get that, but whatever. <laughs> I was happy with what I got. I mean, hey, I got, you know, six packs of the new set and a mystery booster that I can stick under my stocking tiger. Um, but, yeah, I thought they could have done a better job sort of advertising that aspect. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's tough. Uh, um I guess the the other piece that I just wanted to talk about real quick was the um, was the command zone. Mm-hmm. Um, so for those who don't know, there was a specific area set aside. You could pay pay for a command zone pass, and that would get you into this area. And what that got you was they would uh, they would help pair you so that you could play a lot of commander. So you would just. Show your pass, they would work it out, and you would get set up in a pod, and they'd give you a location to play. And that was great. Um, I know that other events, sorry to interrupt, I know that other no. events, they give you specific tickets too, right? Like you can, like you, like it's like an on-demand, like here's a ticket, can I get a game? Yeah. So like yeah, you get a limited th- amount too, right? Right, and I believe it was set up so that, you know, uh, so there were, I mean, there were prizes involved, but mm. it's all flat pri- it's all flat prize structure. So you would play, and at the end of the game, everybody wins a pack or whatever the prize was. I, I'm not sure. Um, as somebody who didn't go to the command zone, I never had a shortage of commander games. Now, I also went with a, a significant number of friends who also right. had other, other friends that I didn't know who were also playing, and those friends had friends, and those friends had friends. So when I, you know, so when I was ready to sit down for a game, I could usually round up three people easily and sit down for a game. Um, Wizards was also, it was also great that there was always, there was always a place to play. I, there was never a time when I looked around and thought, I can't even find a table because there was always a table there. Now, I don't know if that's, if the, if the numbers were what Wizards wanted or if they were too low, and that's why there was all this space. I have no idea. I don't know any of the background stuff behind that. But what I do know... Let's give them the benefit of the doubt, and they planned for this. They yes. they gave let's, you so much free play that, area. Right, so much free free play area that there was always a table available. So I was always able to get a game in. So do I think there's value in the command zone pass? I don't know. Um, mm. I, I think for somebody like me, who is going with a pile of friends unless I'm looking for the swag 
then I don't think it was all that beneficial. If you are going to Minneapolis and it's you and a buddy and it's just the two of you and you really don't know anybody else who's going, then yeah, maybe the command zone pass makes sense. Maybe it's mm. a good idea that you have this because then you're just asking wizards to pair you with people who are who have a you know decks with similar power levels and and you'll be able to play commander all day long, and that's great. Um, but if you're going with a group of friends and you think you've got at least eight or eight or ten people with you. I'm saying you can probably get in all the commander you want uh, yeah. just with that. And on top of that, I mean, there were more, more than once when I was in the middle of a game, you know, we were, or we were coming close to the end of a game and somebody would be just sort of like, any of you guys interested in another game as this one wraps up? I've got, you know, a buddy over here and we need two more people. Yeah. And it seems so like that, those sort of things were always out there. It seems like going, at least going to the free play area, because they, they have a free play area uh, um, that they is separate. had a number of free separate. play areas. So. Um, yes. And it seems like you could go to any free play area and somebody's looking for, you know, one or two people to fill up right. a pod. Or uh, I know I <laughs> probably more than five people brought cubes i mean like obviously in the convention as a whole but i know specifically more than five people i think who brought cube or something to draft um and those especially cube people are always looking for new people to to play their cube so that they can yes. refine it and all this thing um so if like that's your type of thing definitely like either find those people on twitter while you're there or uh that's the other thing is like people on twitter are always looking for games um yeah and honestly if you're into cube and you want to play games or you want to you and you want to cube while you're there reach out to folks before you get there mm. um folks brings bring there are there are plenty of folks who will bring their cube to these kind of events but they're bringing them because they know eight people <laughs> that are all going to play because their cube is worth thousands of dollars Mm. they're not going to they're they're going to be very reluctant if you just wander up and say i would love to get in on your on your cube that's guy. fair yeah it's like dude i would love to have you but not with these cards that's fair how yeah. about how about next time when i'm when i'm running a cube that i brought because i'm willing to share this with everybody kind of thing just yeah it, but yeah again what to ex what to expect is reach out first right um and I think that with with the with the command zone thing, it's tough because like on one hand, yes, they're a company and that they like you know need money and stuff, but like that like that's their purpose, you know. And yeah. uh, but on the other hand, like they could, I feel like just as easily supply the services that the command zone is giving, um, maybe a bit more on demand like like you get there and then you like are like okay like i want to get like a command ga commander game in you know mm -hmm. go up to the booth and be like oh like yeah here's some money here's my name you know call me when it's ready type of thing um because like i feel like getting a whole pass especially like if there's so much going on we i think i think the free to pl like the the free play areas like where you can play whatever you want with whoever you want, wherever you want, type of thing. Like, it it's obviously good to hear that they learned from, was it Vegas, where like yeah. it was just completely deserted. <laughs> um, but I think that like having having that like cordoned off area may not be as I don't know as useful as they think. Um, I know that maybe it's it's so that you can avoid the things like at your paxes where like you're sit you sit down yeah. at a table you get a game going and then ever, somebody's like actually can you, you move? move yeah um which I mean is something you need to expect if you're at at a pax or uh, that type of like a, like bigger yeah. than magic thing if you're at a magic yeah. event you can probably get away with staying at the table um, mm -hmm. like nobody's gonna ask you to move. 
unless right. you're in a clearly marked area. <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I feel like the, the question of command zone or not command zone is obviously base by base specific. Um, Cause I know that like my initial instinct is to say, no, don't do a command zone. People will find games or like, have like a like a concierge right. to like figure things out but i feel like i know my response if i was like in that position of like there's no command zone where what do i do like i know that i would never end up getting a game in um unless i came with you know a bunch of people but the the circumstances of going alone or with you know one other person is right it's tough yeah and that's um, that's why i you know that's why I'm not saying that I think it's a bad idea. <laughs> I think that for a lot of folks, that is the option. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I've been to I've been to conventions where I I wanted to go because of the content, but I really didn't know anybody there. And having something like the command zone to allow you know to facilitate that game setup is a great thing. Uh, mm. But like I said, if you're if you're coming with a bunch of friends or you already know a bunch of people. Um, I don't. I don't know that you're going to need it. Um, you know, at that point, you start weighing whether or not the the money is worth the the extra swag that you get with it. And I mean, for me, no. Um, it also opened up a lot of freedom for me because I know that if I had a command zone pass, I would be feeling obliged to use it. Yeah. And uh, the way it was set up for me is it meant that I had no structure. Or I had no time or nothing occupying my time or demanding my time. That's a better phrase. Um, so if I wanted to catch the panel, I'd just go do that. If I wanted, you know, if I was meeting somebody at a particular time, I didn't have to worry about anything else. I just went and did it. It was, it just, everything ran, uh, everything went so smoothly in large part because I just had no demands on my time. I didn't have to be anywhere at a specific time. So, I mean, the closest I had to that was the last day when I had committed to a, a cube draft. We, I had committed to an arch enemy cube draft. Um, and that meant that for Sunday morning, I, my time was occupied. But, um, <laughs> you know, that was fine. But, uh, um, yeah, it just, I, I would have felt obliged to be using it more. And in the end, I felt like the games I got were were better than what I would have got if I'd been in the command zone because I played against people who knew me and knew what to expect. So, yeah. yeah. Um, so, all of this said, you know, I know how you felt about yeah. conventions before. I know, I know yeah. that, like, generally, if you wanted to just play with this group of friends it would make more sense to just like go somewhere and just play with them. How, yeah. how has this affected your experience or your, your thoughts on, well, I guess. Okay, just... so I'm, I'm lucky enough. I run, I run BrewCon, which is essentially an opportunity for me to play magic with a whole bunch of my friends. And we, you know, we do, we fire cubes, we play conspiracy draft, we do, uh, plenty of commander it's at my house it's a bunch of my friends mm -hmm. and i have a really good time with that and that is always going to be way better than a convention for me because hey half the reason for me to go to a convention is to see my friends and play magic with them which is what i get to do at my house mm. at, at brewcon so uh, so i'm not going to compare the two brewcon wins every single time right however it, this is the, the, this was great and I will say that if BrewCon wasn't landing directly on top of MagicCon Minneapolis, they're the same weekend. Um, if it wasn't on the same weekend, I would seriously, pardon me, I would seriously consider look at trying to get mm. to Minneapolis. Um, I mean, we just, I would just spent an hour talking about, you know, what to expect. And I never even mentioned the art show that was off site. Oh yeah. Did you go to it? I, I went every day. They changed oh, the art yeah. every day. Brian Scott Walters and Mike Lineman did just an amazing job. Uh, they they laid it out. They put it together. Um, uh, they 
Mike put out the call to a bunch of his friends for some help after each day. So at 5 p.m. we would, uh, on Friday and Saturday night, I got to go in just as they were closing and we would take all the art down off the walls and put up the new, and then, you know, they would sort which art goes where and then you would be involved in setting it up and, you know, moving tables around and, you know, doing basic grunt work. But um, I also got to see all of the art every day and it was just spectacular and it was uh, free of charge. You just needed to have a pass and uh, they had they had guests they had guests that who were there to sign and chat for you know like a couple hours each day and it was just it was just really well done and really worth the time uh, you know it was what a five ten minute walk to get there and then you could you know stare at uh, everything from sketches to inked inked sketches to uh, the older the older arts which were you know little tiny pieces <laughs> to some of the newer stuff with uh, uh, Jaya Ballard and Elish Norn on on just massive you know on massive pieces and uh, uh, and there were some uh, some statues and uh, some some other stuff there uh, they did, like I said they just did a great job and I am confident that Minneapolis is going to be even bigger since Mike lives there and he's going to have a ton of time to get ready for this thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, if I could go to Minneapolis, I absolutely, I absolutely would, but, uh, yeah, uh, that's not happening for this time around, but yeah. So. so it seems like, like magic conventions, magic cons, if you yeah. will, uh, are headed in the right direction. It seems like, mm-hmm. you know, pre pandemic, it was all about the events. It was all about, you know, trying to see who gets top eight and like who gets to qualify for the next thing. And it like, that was like the big draw. Um, right. And I think obviously through the, the year of commander as they, they dubbed it, yeah. uh, which 2020 man, uh, yeah. between, between that and just like the overwhelming popularity of the format um, and things heading toward, casualness uh they've been they've been learning a lot in terms of like setting up more panels setting up you know uh i don't know if this was actually affiliated with the uh the convention itself but the 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 art show was a big draw i heard multiple or i saw multiple people talking about it on twitter um it seems like a really cool thing to like just kind of make it a bigger thing a convention rather than an event you know and it seems like it it seems like they're they're learning slowly but surely um Mm -hmm. or maybe quickly i don't know uh and it it seems like it's like i i was like i had a little bit of fomo at the beginning of the weekend but like man by saturday midday i was just like i wish i could just be hanging out and being enveloped in the magic community um it just seemed like like a real cool time, and I'm I'm excited to eventually go to one. I don't know when I'll be able to, but uh, we'll see. I hope they do one in L.A. eventually, but I doubt it. Uh, it might be a while. L.A. is tough because I think they draw. They, they expect that Vegas is just going to draw everybody who would be in. LA. Yeah. So who knows? Maybe I'll go to Vegas. Um, who knows? But that that that's. If anybody out there wants to fund my trip to Vegas, uh, <laughs> hit me up. Um, my last point. Mm-hmm. Yes, you had to pay to go to the convention. Um, and I know that for a lot of us who are a little older, who regularly went to anything magic related, and it was essentially free unless you were playing in a tournament. Um, okay. These are new times. That, that those days are gone and we need to try and forget mm. that that's what was happening because back then what were you getting for your for your free you were getting the ability to stand in a massive long lineup to talk to two artists instead of the 20 plus that were at the that were at this convention um, you 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 certainly didn't get any sort of magic related swag and they had a magic store with swag just for this convention mm. 
forget about magic swag. Um, this, this convention, they had wizards employees wandering around with the secret layer cards and just giving them out to people at random. I mean, uh, there's, it, this is a genuine magic convention. This is, this is not, this is not an oversized tournament where other people come to not play in the tournament, but to hang out and play magic. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. This is bigger. I mean, you walk down the streets outside the convention center and the lamp posts had magic con flags on them. Hmm. I'm like, this is big. This is, yeah. big. this is real. This is, this is an, a genuine magic convention. It seems like like a thing. Like it's like it's big. It's it's more. I mean, I haven't used this word in ten years, but epic. Like it 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 seems like yes. Like like they're putting your money towards something. You know, they've they they're hiring cosplayers. You know, they're putting them in built sets. Right. It's not just like somebody who did this as a hobby is like. I mean, they've got the right. hobby cosplayers they're, as well not, but yes. like they're, um, they're putting effort to, into it right they're not jamming a thousand or fifteen hundred people into a single hall <laughs> that's just rows of tables right with with stuff happening along the edges of the walls you know that's not what this is anymore these are genuine booths these are uh, all that stuff in the middle all that stuff on the edge comes to the middle those tables they're still there they were on the lower level I never, I never went to the lower level. Oh my and god! I still, I still felt like I got my money's worth, and I didn't play in a single draft. I didn't, didn't sign up for any tournament, any tournament related stuff at all. I, that just wasn't what I wanted to do. But I was, I, there was still never a shortage of things to do, and I don't feel like I, and I, well, and I feel like I got my money's worth. So, um, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm, so, I'm. Yes. I I am now fully FOMO out. Like I'm, ah oh, man, damn. You should be. You should be. <laughs> I am. <laughs> I. It was. It was. It was a really good time. So. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, everyone out there, if uh, if you hear us talking about the next Magic Con we're gonna be going to, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, beforehand, or if you see us there, say hi. I, I know I'd love to be said hello to. I'd love to be acknowledged. Um, I yeah, we'll we'll be the guys playing with the Temple of the False Pod playing that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe they'll get updated, but uh, we'll see. Easy, um, easy. <laughs> yeah, my, mine's messy, but that's why I bought an extra one. Um, I bought three for the two of us. Uh oh. Uh. But yeah, man, come say, come, come play magic, play magic for me, play magic with us. Yes. Uh, but uh, hey, next week we're gonna be doing our temple's treasures. We're just pushing everything off a week, yeah. so you're gonna notice some inconsistencies. Like in the next episode, we'll be like, wow, episode five. This is episode five. Uh, but we're 95 episodes into this wonderful journey we call Temple of the False Pod. We're at X and Not Optimized, but our plays sure as heck are fun. I'm Andy. I'm Bruce. Oh, and may your fifth land be the temple. Bye! Wait, wait. Before you go, I uh, just wanted to say thank you for listening. You can reach out to us via email at falsepodmtg at gmail.com or on Twitter at falsepodmtg. Bruce is at Mana Burned, and I'm at Andy Weekend, though you'll definitely notice I use the podcast Twitter far more often. Now that we've got you here, make sure you subscribe, like, rate us on uh, whatever podcast platform you use. It helps us out. It gets us more reach. Subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Uh, like a video there. Leave some comments for more casual enjoyment. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back with some more timeless discussions about all things casual. So come hang out, and may your fit land the temple. Bye-bye. Should I do my best, Bruce? Bye!